Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. On August 19th, John Hunt, a 61-year-old retired logger who does logging for fun, went into the woods by himself to retrieve a pile of fallen aspen trees for winter firewood. All was fine until a trailer that was attached to his truck slipped and landed on his foot. John Hutt was trapped. After about 30 minutes with his cell phone in the cab of his truck and nobody within miles to hear his cries for help, he realized that the only way to free himself was to cut away his boot and then to cut off his toes. And so with a three-inch pocket knife, he began his painful work. It hurt so bad, Hutt said, I would cut for a while and then take a rest and catch a few breaths. When he was finally free, he stopped the bleeding by wrapping his foot in a shirt, climbed into a semi-cab, and drove toward home. And once in cell phone range, he called 911, and then he left a message on his wife's cell phone. Please call, I cut off my foot. <laughs> Hutt may have lost his toes, but he didn't lose his sense of humor. He was joking with a 911 operator before he was met by an ambulance. And when he was reunited, reunited with his wife at the hospital, he was very proud of her, for in his words, there was no crying or whining. But in spite of his humor and his positive attitude, he was also very realistic about the seriousness of his situation. For he said, it was the only way out, alive. John Hutt was trapped. He was imprisoned by a six-ton trailer without a lot of options, but instead of curling up to die, he looked with hope at the possibilities and did what needed to be done that he might ultimately live life. Our scripture lesson from Paul this morning, his letter to the Philippians, shares the thoughts and struggles of another who found himself trapped and in prison. To put it simply, when the Apostle Paul wrote these words, he was in a Roman jail with a death sentence hanging over his head. And so issues of life and death were no joking matter to him. And yet from his prison cell, Paul wrote, For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. And then he went on to invite his readers to live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You know, there are a lot of opinions about the purpose of this letter, but it is the judgment of Gilberto Colazzo, Vice President for Missional Development of the Disciples of Christ, that Paul is challenging his readers, the folks in Philippi, and he is challenging us to do nothing less than to find hope and joy in the difficult moments of life. He is challenging us to do nothing less than to always, always, always live in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. To live with hope. But how in the world did Paul, how in the world can we do that? How can we live with joy and hope in the face of struggles, in the face of a cancer diagnosis, or the disastrous loss of a job, in the face of injury, a loved one's death, or the countless concerns that lock us up in prisons of depression, prisons of doubt, prisons of despair and desolation? How can we find our way free to live life again. Well, it ain't easy. But in those moments when we are imprisoned by our emotions, our challenges, our fears and our tears, we have two choices. We can give up and experience defeat, death, and remain emotionally and spiritually trapped by the six-ton tractor trailer of our deepest despair. 
or we can choose to look beyond our circumstances see the possibilities and believe that God will lift us up and show us the way that will lead us out of our prisons, out of the valleys of shadows to the place where we can live life once again. With God on our side, there is no need to ever abandon hope. Rather, we are called to embrace it, to live it even and especially in the darkest moments of our lives because even a little bit of hope can change everything. And besides, it's a whole lot better, a whole lot more life-giving and affirming than the alternative. The school system in a large city had a program to help kids keep up with their schoolwork during their stays in a hospital. One day, a teacher who was assigned to the program received a routine call asking her to visit a particular child. She took the child's name and room number and talked briefly to the child's regular teacher. We're studying nouns and adverbs in class now, the regular teacher said, and I'd be grateful if you could help him. Help him understand them so that when he comes back, he doesn't fall too far behind. The hospital program teacher went to see the boy that afternoon. No one had bothered to mention that the boy had been badly burned and was in incredible pain. Upset at the sight of the child, she stammered, and as she told him, I've been sent by your school to to help you with nouns and adverbs. When she left, she felt as if she hadn't really accomplished very much at all. But the next day, a nurse asked her, What did you do to that boy? And the teacher felt that she must have done something wrong and began to apologize. No, no, said the nurse. You don't know what I mean. We've been worried about that child. But ever since yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back. He's responding to treatment. It's as though he decided to live. Two weeks later, the boy explained that he'd completely given up hope until that teacher arrived. And then everything changed when he came to a simple realization, and he expressed it this way. They wouldn't send a teacher to work on nouns and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? Friends, regardless of our struggles and challenges, The fears and tears that imprison us, there is hope because there is one, the living presence of the loving God who is with us each and every day. And God will not leave us comfortless. God will not abandon us to our prison of heartache and struggles. Trust, believe, And God will lead us to see new possibilities for our future that with hope in our hearts we might live a life that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we might live fully, wholly, and faithfully once again. That we might live life. Amen.